Hello, and welcome to another video, the one you've been waiting for. We have soared past a thousand subs. It's amazing. Thank you guys again. But we've also had a vote come through. 54% of you have voted for the 7900 XTX in the Radeon test. And I have one here, brand new. I haven't even removed the plastic from the front shroud. It's off the rear. This is a sexy card. It looks good, it's heavy. It's not as thick as the 4080 Super and other cards that are out there. And it is fast, let me tell you. Um, I'm going to be comparing it to this guy. As I said, much thicker, much bigger 4080 Super. I had to modify it slightly to reduce some plastic rattling that was happening. Frustrating, I know, for a new product, but these things happen. Um, I have performance tuned both of these cards to get more performance out of them. And here are the tech specs showing uh, the actual recorded simulator performance numbers for the core, for the power draw. It goes without saying, if you're in a, uh, a tight situation in your sim uh, rig or office and an extra 100 watts is the difference between you overheating in your race car or not, the 4080 Super has the power advantage. There's no way around that, in my opinion. It's just there and present. In fact, you can get 98% of this performance, 95% of this performance at under 300 watts. That's super impressive from the 4080 Super. But let's go back to this guy, the 7900 XTX. One of the issues I ran into this was with iRacing. And I'll be honest with you guys, right off the bat, I had trouble getting the most out of this card. This isn't going to surprise a lot of you. I know we have hear other people on Reddit, on YouTube talk about this. What was really striking to me was the effect at triple 1440p. And I'm gonna show you some results. It's important to go over these because this is why I'm not talking about iRacing today. I need to learn more about why this is happening. There is a substantial gap between the GPU frame times and the CPU frame times. As in, this card is idling more often than it should. In fact, I had to go in and manually boost the minimum clock, otherwise it wasn't even going to run at its uh, Radeon default clock. That's crazy, I shouldn't have to do that. So there is some kind of fundamental, fundamental issue here. I'm trying to figure it out. If you have advice, uh, send it my way via email or a YouTube comment. I really do appreciate that. Anyways, let's get into some ACC Norchlife action. Up top, as per usual, I've got a replay running of the race that I did, and it's an AI race. I had trouble early last week to get into an actual official server, so I just went with 30 AI around the track. I don't want this to be CPU focused, so that's why I didn't max out the grid slots. The chart below is showing frames per second, and you can see the scale on the left-hand side. What's important to note here is that the GP circuit represents about the first two minutes of a full lap, which in this case was 10 minutes, and that GP circuit is more intense than anything else in the North Loop. My goal during the race was not to just send the car up the inside of every apex and steal a position from the AI, but to stay close to them and get a demanding situation here for the graphics card. Here are the in-sim graphic settings that I used. It's mostly high. I just don't like the way ACC looks with everything on Epic. And I decided to use FSR for an apples to apples comparison. Yes, you can use DLSS and mod that even and get better results with NVIDIA. I'm using the Intel 13700K platform for this testing with DDR5 memory. With this first result, we see a early lead for the 4080 Super showing a 7.5% advantage over the 7900 XTX, but neither card is really creating a gap with last generation 3080 Ti. When we look at the GPU busy chart, well, maybe we can see why. We're actually running into a CPU bottleneck here where the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX are not being fully utilized with only 88% and 86% respectively. When we switch to triple 1080p, these are the results. 
The 7900 XTX trails behind the 4080 Super by just 1.3%, but the 3080 Ti is only 3.2% behind it. The GPU busy chart reveals once again, yup, we're looking at a CPU limitation here. Both of these high-end video cards would benefit from a faster processor. Okay, so what happens if we increase the GPU workload? And we can do that by going triple 1440p. At this resolution, the 7900 XTX actually gains a victory of 2.7% over the 4080 Super and shows a 22% gain over the 3080 Ti. The GPU busy chart suggests that we're getting close to using these GPUs to their full potential, but we're not yet in the high 90% range like we are with the 3060 Ti and the 6700 XT. For triple 4K resolution testing, I decided to compare NVIDIA Surround to AMD Ifinity. Both technologies showed a slight performance advantage over running traditional 4K with windowed borderless. And we see the 7900 XTX trail behind by about 10 points to the 4080 Super. And it shows another 20% gain over the 3080 Ti. Now looking at the GPU busy chart, and finally we see that high utilization at 99%. So this had me wondering, was the 13700K actually limiting the performance at those high resolutions? Even though we're, we see high GPU utilization, it still could be the case that we're waiting on the CPU. So I decided, okay, let's throw it in the 7800X 3D and see what happens. And here are those results. So here's the same chart, although it's stacked slightly differently with the 4080 Super on top of the 7900 XTX and each bar is representing the CPU using that video card. At this resolution, there is a clear advantage to the 7800X 3D and its 3D cache. And it's, I would say, evenly rewarding both graphics cards with a boost in performance. But if I increase the graphics quality to epic across the board, we lose that 3D vCache advantage. It's now falling back into the clock rate or becoming GPU dependent, the performance. And we see that at triple 4K as well, this time back down to high settings and not epic. I'm using 30 cars in this benchmark, and that's the same number of cars I'm using in the other ones as well. So I decided to stick with the 13700K for the remainder of the testing. This also allows me to show results from previous benchmark runs I did in February. Yes, it's older data, older version of the sim, slightly older drivers. I agree with you. The point here is that we're comparing the 4080 Super to the 7900 XTX, and the remainder of the results are just there as a reference, adding context to two of the fastest video cards available right now in case you're looking to upgrade. At single 4K around SPA and triple 1080p, we're definitely running into a CPU limitation for the two fastest cards. We see here that the 3080 Ti is able to actually surpass the 4080 Super, and the GPU busy once again reveals underutilization of the two top cards. But when we increase the resolution to triple 1440p, we see these two cards break away from a 30 Ti, and now the 7900 XTX is leading by about 1.7%. The GPU busy chart now shows they're running near full throttle. This resolution should be demanding for any video card. At triple 4K, however, the 7900 XTX trails behind by 9.6% to the 4080 Super. Again, this is comparing NVIDIA Surround to AMD Ifinity. It's interesting to note in the GPU busy chart, the VRAM usage shown here as a percentage. 77% of 16 gigabytes is 12 gigs used on the 4080 Super, which means the 7900 XTX is using 17.7 gigabytes of its 24 available, which seems excessive and certainly doesn't provide an advantage, at least not in this scenario. Next up is Suzuka in GT4 nighttime race. At single 4K, the 4080 Super is, in my opinion, tied with the 7900 XTX with just a 1.2% difference separating them. It's also a bit surprising to see the GPU utilization this high for this resolution. 
At triple 1080p, we see the 7900 XTX take to the lead, again, by a small margin over the 4080 Super. But with the 3080 Ti so close, I think we know what to expect in the GPU busy chart. Yeah, and, and this confirms a CPU bottleneck in this scenario. At triple 1440p, we see the 7900 XTX establish a 4.7% lead over the 4080 Super. And both cards show very well compared to the previous generation, like the 3080 Ti. GPU utilization is high. And we're always expecting the memory utilization from the 7900 XTX to be less as a percentage because it has more RAM. It has 50% more RAM. So at triple 4K, it's showing the same percentage, which actually means it's using more. So 15.8 gigabytes used on the Radeon compared to 10.5 used on the GeForce. But when we look at the average frames per second, we see that once again, that extra RAM utilization by the 7900 XTX does not seem to yield an advantage. It's losing by over 5% to the 4080 Super in this scenario. Okay, now it's time for a rain race around the Red Bull ring, this time in GT2s. We see the 7900 XTX trail behind the leader 4080 Super by about 8.4%. But the Radeon does show a 4% advantage with the 1% lows. This scenario with the rain seems to be more demanding on the graphics cards than the previous ones. And we can see that in the GPU busy chart here at 96% for the Super and 98% for the 78900 XTX. At triple 1080p, this actually swings back around into the 7900 XTX favor, showing a 2.4% lead over the 4080 Super. This lower resolution is actually easier on the GPUs compared to the single 4K resolution, so we're looking at another CPU influence on these results. Increasing the resolution to triple 1440p, and we see a 3.8% disadvantage to the 7900 XTX compared to the 4080 Super. I mean, they're just trading places, it seems. There are no surprises in the GPU busy and VRAM usage for this resolution. So when we look at triple 4K, the 7900 XTX once again trails behind the 4080 Super, this time 6.8% behind. And the VRAM usage once again shows that the 7900 XTX is willing to store more there, 16 gigabytes compared to 10 for the 4080 Super. And yet it's unable to leverage that capacity for more performance. Using the power of pivot, let's try and combine all of the tracks and resolutions and see what we get. So starting off with single 4K, the 4080 Super averaged 182.5 frames per second, which is a 4.5% advantage over the 7900 XTX. When using a Intel 13700K, however, it looks like even the 3080 Ti is able to deliver outstanding performance. So if you're looking to push ACC beyond 200 frames per second, maybe you have a 240 hertz monitor, you need the fastest CPU on the market. Maybe it's a 7800X3D or a 14900KS. The results at triple 1080p also showcase the importance of the CPU. There is no point getting this 7900 XTX or 4080 Super if you're on anything slower than an Intel 13700K. I mean, it's, it's even overkill for this CPU. At triple 1440p, this is where we finally see that generational leap, especially between the third, something like the 3080 Ti and the 4080 Super. It's what, 25% improvement. And the 7900 XTX averaged out to about a 1.4% lead over the 4080 Super. If I had used the 7800 X3D Ryzen processor, maybe there would be a bigger difference between these cards, but I'll have to leave that testing for another day. When set up for triple 4K, again, I used Nvidia Surround or AMD Ifinity. There was always a clear advantage to the 4080 Super, averaging out to about 8.7%. 
I do want to spend a little time talking about this. And this is the frame time chart out of Cap Frame X showing the Assetto Corsa Competizione around Suzuka replay. I'm zoomed out to see the entire replay of uh, 152 seconds. You see that on the X axis and then on the Y axis, this is the frame time. The higher up the data, the longer it takes to generate the frame, therefore the lower the FPS would be. Blue represents the total frame time, yellow represents the GPU. This is an ideal data set because the GPU is moving in rhythm with the overall frame time. A spike or lag or hiccup in the GPU will force a spike in the overall frame time, but a blue spike from the CPU may have nothing to do with the yellow GPU. This is very high level. I've zoomed out on this. It gets way more squiggly if I zoom in. The point though is I want to show you the GPU busy deviation. It's represented as 4% in the top right. During the creation of each frame time that's being analyzed, the GPU was not doing meaningful work about 4% of the time on average across this entire 152 section of the benchmark. In my GPU busy charts, I just take 100% and I minus this deviation to show you what would be 96%, 96% busy. So this was the data set for the 7900 XTX. If I bring in the 4080 Super, we get this. Now I've talked about the yellow spikes in previous videos. The only way I have figured out to get rid of those is using Nvidia Surround. And we're testing at triple 1440p here, so I don't have that enabled. This is just windowed borderless. The 4080 Super lost to the 7900 XTX at this resolution in this track. And that's because I don't have Nvidia Surround turned on. Had I turned it on, it would have smoothed out the results for the 4080 Super and would show very similar performance to the 7900 XTX. But I'm bringing all of this up to talk about iRacing. And here's the Suzuka results. We're still at triple 1440p. I have not enabled Nvidia Surround. That's why the spikes are still there for the 4080 Super. But look at the deviation, the difference in gap between the blue and yellow uh, squiggly lines on the top chart and the bottom chart. This is why I haven't presented much for iRacing results yet because I'm trying to figure this out. Is this really just the implication of SMP? Is this some other driver issue? Am I bottlenecked by this 13700K? What happens when I use a 7800X 3D? I have a lot of questions and it's just taking time to figure all that out. Anyway, that's just a sneak peek of what I'm working on for you with iRacing. It is coming, uh, it's just taking time. And if you have any ideas of what was happening in that frame time chart, uh, clues or insights, please post in the comments. I'd love to know more about what you think. And also like and subscribe so that when I do publish that uh, iRacing video, you have notification of it right away. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching.